I've been in these um, conferences where they are trying to figure out how to get more African American architects into the profession, into our country. And I've been in a national conference, of American Institute of Architects. I've been in National Organization of Minority Architects. And they're breaking their you know, brains. They're trying to figure it out. What is it? How do, can we get more African Americans into this profession of architecture? The statistics are there's about 16 to 2,000 African American architects in America out of 100,000 architects. Back in 1968, when the American Institute of Architects were challenged to um, not be so um, uh, racially homogenous, the, the percentage is 1%. It's now almost 2%, not grown a lot. And I'm sitting in these organizations, and I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm the answer. Um, and I want to raise my hand. I don't, because it would be embarrassing. But I'm sitting here thinking, I know the answer. I know the answer. Send them to Scott High School. Let them live in Old West End. They're right, right over there by the, uh, the Gothic Cathedral. Let them walk all through, all through the Old West End. And then, at the end of their high school career, they're going to architecture. Of course, that's idiotic. But that's what happened to me. And I grew up in the West End, and it made all the difference in the world. However, that's not the real reason I was inspired to be who I am and what I, and what I do. I want to talk a little bit about intentional community. And remember that when I, when I talk about here, the idea to reimagine this in Toledo is we do it intentionally. In 1984, I graduated from architectural school um, in Virginia and moved to Columbus, Ohio. Drove around Columbus a, a lot downtown and went to this area called German Village. German Village reminded me so much of Old West End. Old West End has these principles of design that are, are amazing and it makes what we call traditional neighborhood development um, come alive in, in I'm sorry, I'm gonna say Columbus, in Toledo. Now, tr traditional neighborhood development has these patterns and these, these principles that the Old West End naturally did. Um, shops, when I grew up, there were um, shops and um, grocery store, a small grocery store, right around the corner, right where the parking lot is right now. And in 1968 is when we landed in Owens, and I grew up in Detroit, and we landed right north of Scott High School, and we stayed with our grandmother, my mom's mother. And we had this kind of extended family compound thing going. Uh, we lived with grandma, and across the street was my auntie. And eventually, we moved next door. And it's grandma's house. And this is not far from Scott High School. And it's, you know, I could go on into the architecture of it and all, but I won't. What I, what I really want to talk about is the non-architectural stuff that made all the difference in the world to me. Grandma inspired me to go on architectural school. As I'm, I'm about to leave a week before school, she, I said, I am scared stiff. She said, you can do it. Just her saying that when I'm eating my oatmeal made all the difference in the world. Our house is, I was inspired by my stepdad to, to be an architect. He actually asked me, would I like to do something like that after I stole his um, drawing pad and started drawing cars. And um, after all the dust, dust settled, he um, said, you ever thought about being an architect? And I said, no, what is it? So he told me, and right in the right window um, on a, in the bay window there, is where he asked me, and two years later I made the decision at 12 to become that architect and never turn back. Actually, I'm flat out excited about it even more. My aunt and uncle lived across the street. They had the first um, black McDonald's in, in Toledo. And they inspired me to go on and have my own business, which I do. And I recently came back to Toledo and 
opened my office here in Toledo, where I grew up. Now, I left here in the 80s and when I first got married, and all my kids are grown. Now, I'm on my own adventure. Um, they're out, and they're married, and they're having their own kids, and we're on our own adventure now, and so Toledo is that adventure. We imagine Toledo, which is great. Now, traditional neighborhood development is not necessarily what I'm here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is multi-generational housing, and it really flows best in traditional neighborhoods like OSD. Multi-generational housing and multi-generational neighborhoods kind of go hand in hand. And key, the key word I want to talk, I want to emphasize again, is intentional. What happened with me and my family and our little compound thing was not intentional; it was an accident. But if we would intentionally think through those kind of things in Toledo, what could be the possibility for families? Uh, Multi-generational neighborhoods need to have um, social networks that are um, social, healthy social networks. And those need to occur um, with things like link individual and formal networks and formal services, jointly use community resources like schools and churches, reconnect neighborhood design principles to health, for instance, like walking, address caregiving for both the elderly and children in each neighborhood. A multi-generational neighborhood needs to be walkable, public transportation, which Toledo has, urban grocery stores, which Toledo does not have, shopping and walking distance, or West End used to have, community organizations in walking distance, porches and stoops for gatherings. And that last one was probably one of the most important parts of growing up in Old West End was that the community that was built on those porches on a daily basis between the generations. Um, I saw a lot of gray hairs. I got fussed out by a lot of gray hairs. Um, but it made all the difference in the world. And as I'm now a father, grandfather. Um, it's also important that the generations continue to inspire one another. Two words in this talk, intentional and inspiration, is what I want to where I want to land as we keep discussing this multi-generational housing and multi-generational neighborhoods. Walking, really, um, walking distance. Who's got the sign? Um, Grocery stores and walking distance are important. Shops, many schools are important in walking distance. Housing diversity, which is uh, rental apartments, condominiums, um, live work, row houses, cottages, housing, not just single family houses, but all types, types of housing types that will attract all kind of multi-generation, multi-racial, multi-income families. The heart of that is the life cycle house, which is a house where you have three or more generations in the house. And creativity, and it's, these are houses that I've actually designed, creativity comes best through inspiration. It has to be inspiration there. And the family is that core for inspiration in most cases. Uh, here, I call this my TED Talk house. Um, I designed it for the street that we lived on. And it is a multi-generational home, where there's three generations living in this home. You're looking at the parts that of the house that really bring out what's important to each member of the house, no matter what household, no matter what their age is. For instance, there are um, there is a um, artist studio and a, a um, greenhouse in the back. First floor is for the family, for public spaces. Second floor is for the, the nuclear family where they share their private space. And third floor will be for an attic, um, is an attic, forgive me, 
where you have um, the elderly cottage is what I call it, and grandma and grandpa, not not um, mother-in-law suite. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the mother-in-law suite, what happened to grandpa, but uh, <laughs> um, this is how this is for both grandparents, and where where in this house in this this design. And this is just one design, and I did it in a few days. There are multiple families, multiple unique situations, and it is important that we intentionally, through inspiration of love of each family member, it's important that we intentionally reimagine maybe Toledo as a multi-generational community.